There's been reports coming out of the Las Vegas Raiders camp that Nate Hobbs has looked very, very impressive in the few practices that he has practiced in. Uh, July 31st was the first day that Nate Hobbs actually came back. If you guys remember, he took a softball to the face. Uh, he had a, a bruised eye and basically he didn't practice for the first week and a half or so of camp. Uh, but he did come back about three to four days ago. And he has practiced now with full pads on for the Raiders for at least two days. And in the second day, which was yesterday, he looked very, very impressive. So much so that some people are already reporting that this guy may actually be the Raiders' second best defensive player by the time this season ends. Right now, uh, there's a couple of guys that, you know, you can make the argument for. Uh, I think some people are going to make the argument for a guy like Chandler Jones. Some people make the argument for Divine Diablo. Some people may even make the argument uh, for some of these other guys that we may have on the on the defensive side, right? Marcus Peters or whoever else. But some people believe it's going to be Nate Hobbs. And the reason why is because Hobbs has came in and, and done a really good job early on in camp. Uh, according to one of the Raiders beat writers, he said that in his count, Jimmy Garoppolo only comp completed 44% of his passes. He went four of nine. And Nate Hobbs was apparently a big reason why. He matched up against Devontae Adams and Hunter Renfro, and he won both of those reps. Think about what that means. Nate Hobbs in a, a, a drill, right? Uh, he was able to straight up lock these guys down. Now, I believe this was seven on seven, but regardless, that typically favors the offense, right? Most of the time, cornerbacks aren't able to win these type of drills. And the fact that Nate Hobbs was able to cover both Devontae Adams and Hunter Renfro and have success. That's a massive, massive sign to kind of what's what's to expect out of this guy. And it kind of goes beyond that. You know, I've talked to some other people that are at camp as well, and they said this guy looks fluid. This guy looks better with the way he kind of moves and those type of things. And if Nate Hobbs can just continue to develop that portion of his game, the guy can have massive upside, right? Just kind of thinking back about Nate Hobbs and how in, in his first season, the guy looked very good, right? In fact, it was like early on in camp, we realized that, hey, Nate Hobbs has it, right? This guy may be a very good player. And come week one, uh, in preseason, the guy had a, an interception playing at the boundary cornerback position. Uh, he had a sack, I believe, that same week or may have been the next week. The guy was disruptive in that very first preseason game. And we saw right away that this guy has some upside. Now, we didn't see him take the year two leap, right? We oftentimes hear about this second year leap that most guys kind of take uh, going into that second year. He didn't take that leap, right? In fact, some people would argue that Nate Hobbs may have gotten worse in his second year under this new regime, this new system uh, of Patrick Graham's. And that may have happened, right, in, in that first year Patrick Graham's scheme. But this year, this is now the second year in the same system. Guys get better, Right. When you're in that same system, because now you're not thinking as much. It's, it's a little bit more natural. You kind of know what's expected. On top of that, you bring in a guy like Marcus Peters. Uh, you bring in guys like Duke Shelley. You bring in a guy in Marcus Epps who just played in the Super Bowl. To me, the Raiders secondary is going to be better. And I think Nate Hobbs will be the, the leader kind of of that secondary. You know, just taking a step back, some of what I've seen on tape from Nate Hobbs that makes me actually believe this guy's a good football player is being able to force turnovers, right? And I'm not saying just by interceptions. You know, one of the things I noticed with this college tape, and it translated right away into the NFL, is this guy has the ability to punch the ball out, right? Nate Hobbs understands the concept of being able to force turnovers via fumbles, via, you know, maybe tip pass here or there. The guy's a smart football player. And, you know, some guys understand the game of football at a much deeper level and Nate Hobbs is definitely one of those guys right he understands leverage he understands how to potentially jar the football loose he understands those type of things and we've heard from Patrick Graham one of the one of the key things that the Raiders defense is really honing on this season is going to be to force turnovers right that was one of the things that Patrick Graham said in his pressure a couple days back uh, he talked about how it's very, very important for the Raiders to force turnovers, right? In fact, it was one of the reasons why they wanted to get a guy like Marcus Peters, because Peters can kind of help force turnovers. And we heard yesterday in the first portion of padded practice, Marcus Peters got the first interception, right? Day two of, of padded practice, which was yesterday, Peters ended up getting an interception. And that's what we need, right? That's what we brought in a guy like Peters. And to me, you put a guy with P like in Peters, you put a guy in 
uh, Nate Hobbs. You put those two guys on the field together, and I think the Raiders are going to have a very successful secondary. And the crazy part with the secondary is we are so deep on the back end that a guy like Jacarian Bennett or Chris Smith may end up on the practice squad, right? Maybe not Jacarian Bennett because he was a much higher draft pick. Uh, but a guy like Chris Smith, who was a late-round pick, could end up on the practice squad, right? That is how deep this Raiders secondary is. I don't even know who's going to end up starting at cornerback, right? I'm, I'm pretty sure Marcus Peters and Nate Hobbs will start. But then from there, we only have one position left. And we got guys at the cornerback position like Duke Shelley, like Brandon Faison, guys like Amik Robertson, guys like uh, uh, Mark, uh, David Long Jr., right, who has – played with Marcus Peters in the past, right? Um, Sam Webb, right? There's so much depth at that cornerback position. And it's crazy because I don't know who's going to end up starting, who's going to end up making the roster, who's not going to make the roster. Um, you know, I was watching the Raider Cody podcast a couple days back, and he had Nate Hobbs on. And Nate Hobbs talked a little bit about how he may play a little bit of safety. Uh, you know, he, he, he's you know, kind of open to all the different positions that the coaching staff has told them. So safety is something that he may end up doing. Uh, but he's primarily expected to line up as a nickel corner this season, right? So he'll primarily be the slot player for the Raiders. Um, but he also mentioned Bryce Cosby, who the Raiders picked uh, or picked him up as a UDFA last uh, season. Uh, he talked about how this guy is a very underrated player. So people aren't even talking about Bryce Cosby. Uh, he thinks he's one of the more underrated players on this defense and that he may end up having a good season and, and maybe he's a guy that makes the roster, right? So the Raiders secondary is deep as hell, right? I think the Raiders are going to have a lot of success and I think it's because of guys like Nate Hobbs, Marcus Peters. Um, and, you know, it's not just like the name of these guys. It's the fact that in camp, they're actually having a successful camp. Uh, we're hearing the reports from Marcus Peters. We're hearing the reports with Nate Hobbs. We're hearing even other reports, right? Jacarian Bennett has looked good too, for, especially for a rookie. The guys look very, very, very good. So I'm very excited for this season. Let me know what you guys think. Do you guys think that will actually translate into the actual season? All right? Because I do think that sometimes we get certain reports. We hear certain narratives. Uh, guys at camp, are, you know, they'll tell me something and I'll kind of report that to you guys. But it doesn't always translate, right? Uh, but we have seen it translate in the past, right? So it's not that it never translates. But it is sometimes harder for it to actually translate, right? Because oftentimes in camp, you're playing the same receivers. You're playing the same quarterback, the same offensive line. Uh, so sometimes it, it does get repetitive and you can pick on, pick up on certain tendencies and habits and those type of things. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Make sure to smash that subscribe button. The season is right around the corner, man. Um, and I shouldn't even say that because technically training camp is the season. So I guess the season has technically started, but... I'm very fired up, man. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you guys think with a comment below, and I will see you guys next time with another video.